You're watching Eye on Africa here on France 24. Thanks for joining us. I'm Julia Kim. These are your headlines from the continent. Battling South Africa's second pandemic, President Ramaphosa steps up the fight against gender-based violence, announcing what he calls the country's most far-reaching legislative overhaul against femicide. Record downpours in Senegal kill at least six and leave thousands homeless. The government says it's launched an emergency plan to help those in need, but residents say no help has come yet. And proving that music is the universal language. We'll tell you more about a shepherd turned musician from Lesotho whose tunes have captivated audiences from Africa to Europe. South Africa's president had once called the violence against women and girls the country's second pandemic. After a year of promising to tackle the issue, Cyril Ramaphosa has announced three new bills. He's called them the most far-reaching legislative overhaul in the fight against gender-based violence. Now, this follows a series of highly publicised, brutal femicides that triggered protests back in 2019. The country has one of the world's highest rates of rape, and official statistics show that every three hours, one woman is killed. MC Ferreira has more from Cape Town. Well, these bills have been tabled in Parliament exactly a year after protesters descended on Parliament following a spate of murders of young women. The case that made the most headlines here and abroad was that of a student at the University of Cape Town who was lured into a back room of a post office and raped and bludgeoned to death by a postal worker. Now, at the time, there was pressure on President Ramaphosa to bring back the death penalty and to impose a state of emergency. Instead, he promised tougher laws and a state of urgency. One year later, that urgency has not diminished. The number of reported sexual offences increased to 53,000 cases last year, and 2,695 women were murdered. And of course, the moment South Africa went into lockdown in response to COVID-19, there were fears that domestic violence would surge because women would be trapped at home with abusive partners. And we now know that in the past six months, 21,000 cases of domestic violence were reported. And what does the government actually hope to achieve with the passing of these bills? Well, the bills create a new category of crime of sexual intimidation. They broaden the criminal definition of incest and they impose penalties for people who fail to report the sexual or the domestic abuse of children. They also restrict bail for those who are accused of sexual violence and stipulate that it will only be granted in exceptional circumstances. So if these bills become law, victims of domestic violence will also find it easier to apply for protection orders. They'll be able to do it on online. And domestic violence laws will apply to any form of romantic involvement, including brief dating. But there's, of course, a real concern that stricter laws mean very little if the police are not enforcing the law properly. Ramaphosa has spoken very eloquently in the past of the secondary victimization of women by police officers who do not handle cases properly. And there's an attempt to curb that in these laws because the amendment to the Domestic Violence Act states that police officers in future who do not comply with their obligations under the law will face misconduct charges. A record floods have killed at least six people in Senegal. In the capital, Dakar, thousands of residents watched helplessly as water submerged their homes. Saturday's storm dumped a year's worth of rainfall onto the city in a single night. Authorities say they've launched emergency measures to help evacuate those forced to leave their homes. Our correspondent, Elimin Nandao, reports from Kermassar, a suburb badly affected by the floods. Just making her way home is no easy task. Since Saturday, floodwaters have completely engulfed Rakaya's house. In the courtyard, the water levels reached over a metre high. But this resident and housewife has nowhere else to go. She's desperate. The 
The heavy downpour this weekend turned Kermassar neighborhood on the outskirts of Dakar into an artificial lake. Residents are forced to wade in filthy water to get around. The fire brigade even handed out inflatable boats to help people move about, a first this annual rainy season. But some families are afraid they'll have to spend the night on the street. On Saturday evening, President Macky Sall activated an emergency aid plan to help the disaster-stricken population. Well, those heavy rains have wreaked a trail of devastation across West and Central Africa, all the way to Sudan, which is currently experiencing its worst rainy season since records began. Authorities have announced a three-month state of emergency after declaring the country a disaster zone. Sudan was inundated after the Nile River rose to its highest level in nearly a century. Floods have killed at least 100 people and destroyed more than 100,000 homes. Over half a million Sudanese residents have been left homeless. Now, West Africa's regional leaders have given Mali's military junta a September 15th deadline to name its transitional leaders. ECOWAS has also said that the transitional president and prime minister should be civilians. Although it's welcomed the junta's talks with civil society groups and political parties, it's maintained sanctions on Mali. Since the ouster of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita last month, ECOWAS has closed its borders with the landlocked country. It's called for a swift return to civilian rule and a vote within a year, a timeline the junta has not committed to. Well, our reporters asked Malians living in Paris what they thought. J'étais surpris de l'intervention de militaires, mais par contre, je n'étais pas surpris de la démission du président parce qu'on imaginait mal quand même euh, qu'il puisse continuer les trois ans qui restaient euh, dans cette situation. C'est vrai qu'il ne faut pas se précipiter, aller à des élections et nous retrouver dans les cas euh, dans dix ans, dans les mêmes cas dans dix ans, on ne le souhaite pas, mais il ne faut pas non plus que ce soit une transition qui s'éternise et que euh, les sujets essentiels du pays euh, ne puissent pas être traités. Parce qu'il faut reconnaître que la transition ne peut pas tout, tout traiter. Donc dans ces cas, il faut mettre une transition qui soit en place pour mener à des vraies élections transparentes en révoyant les fichiers électoraux et tout ce qui va avec pour qu'on ait des vraies élections et qu'on ait des dirigeants qui ont une certaine légitimité. Actuellement, la crise sociopolitique qui, se, enfin, qui secoue notre pays m'inquiète énormément, enfin, surtout euh, s'agissant de l'avenir. Parce que tantôt, on est dans l'incertitude concernant la transition, qui va le diriger et tout. Et enfin, ça ne nous donne pas assez d'espoir pour retourner de, au Mali. And finally, from the hills of Lesotho to the stages of Oslo, London and Paris, sheep herder turned singer Tiboho Moshaua has captivated audiences around the world with his unique sound. A mix of Lesotho folk music layered over electro sounds and rap. Nicolas Jamal has this report. Morena Laraba used to be a shepherd in Lesotho, but in recent years he's become a musician. He's even performed in Europe. He shows his old friends some of his concerts on his smartphone. Performing on, on world stages, on, on, on like performing, playing big festivals in France, um, in London and, and other places. So it's really, really interesting to see that whole blend working, like to see that whole concoction, um, you know, materializing, I would say. Lorena Laraba mixes electronic dance music, dub reggae and rap. He recently performed in the capital, Maseru. We've really tried our level best to identify potential artists that, you know, represent the country, represent Lesotho as a nation and represent our diversity as a nation. Lorena Laraba stood out there. His, his band is a true reflection of what we are as a nation. His stage character is a shepherd like the one he used to be when he grew up in the mountains of Lesotho. He narrates traditional stories over contemporary music. There's a lot of music everywhere. What Laraba does is just plug into the space where, you know, culture, the Basotho culture sort of meets electronic beats and a more modern sound. 
Lesotho is one of the smallest and least populated African nations. Its rising star, Marina Laraba, hopes to take part in many more international festivals in the coming years. And that's it from us. There's more news coming up. Stay tuned to France 24. Equality, actuality. If you want to really understand what's going on in the world, you need to follow the money. In People and Profit, we tackle the biggest stories in the global economy and break down why they matter to you. From mega mergers to market crashes and those new business ideas that just could change the world. In this economy, it's the show you can't afford to miss. Join us every week for your essential business briefing. People and Profit on France 24 and France24.com. 